So the B2G store champs happened today, Saturday, October 14 at Jamera. Everyone was queued up early for Lotus Petal. So the actual call time was supposed to be 10 where round one starts at 11. And then they later modified this to be 10 a.m. call time with 11 a.m. start of deck building, 11.50 start of round one. Uh, we were actually kind of late in starting. But in any case, this is what I ended up playing. While we were waiting, this was the code that they gave us to uh, join the event. And here's me taking pictures of everyone uh, participating in the event. Uh, there's Sean. Here they are checking out binders. Akiva, a uh yeah sorry for the blurred picture my hands shaking but it was really really nice to see everyone again in a live event face to face it was very very refreshing and i thank everyone for being very patient with me <laughs> while i rummage through the uh the deck with all the misplays and mis triggers and stuff yeah that was a really, really good event. Okay. Um, yep. All right. So, this is the deck that I ended up playing. And I have to say a special thanks to uh, Jello, who actually let me play test with him right before the start of round one to modify the deck to where it is or where it ended, which is this one. The first version of the deck was red-green, because I love red. I am a red mage. But I neglected the fact that I actually have a star removal in black, which is the end. This won me a lot of my games. This was just a real star player. Along with this, we have Feed the Cauldron, we have Candy Grapple, and we have Witch's Vanity as well. A lot of people were playing two to cast creatures, and this caught quite a bit. It caught the uh, the fawn that actually gave you green mana and filtered mana to another color. A Minstrosity, it hit Minstrosity once. Oh, it hit that rare white red Minotaur. The one that deals three damage to any target, it hit that one time. This deck revolves around one very, very interesting card, which is Garrick's Uprising. On my first few games, when this landed in play, it just drew me into more and more things to, uh, to do. And I was really hoping to draw stuff like Hammy right here. It actually worked more than once. Uh, but more than this, Garrick's Uprising, we also have the Huntman's Redemption, and this actually fetched me Hammy. Twice. Twice in all the games, yeah. The version of the deck ended up with, uh, with a red card because this is really, really good removal, and I was able to use it a couple of times, and it, it won me those games, like just outright won me the games and the reason why i uh, i splashed this was because of brave the wilds and edgewall in so i can go ahead and name red as the uh the color so i can cast it along with this we have an adventure side of callous cell sword which i only played once Never got to, to play any other time. I drew it once uh, just so that it can get a counter and attack for lethal, I believe. Yeah, in one of the games with uh, third round against Mitara. But yeah, so 
as you can see, this deck is very, very functional. We got a number of creature cards right here. It only says 12, right? But Welcome to Sweet Tooth produces a 1-1 one, one human token, so that's 13. And Huntsman's Redemption also produces a 3-3 three, three green beast token, so that's essentially 14. The deck is really, really good if you do not stumble on lands like... You got a couple of uh, these guys that produces monster roll tokens. So in one of the games, I had Red Tooth Vanguard already with Trample, but also with a monster roll token casting Garrick's Uprising. And I was able to draw with Garrick's Uprising. And then the next turn, I was able to cast Ferocious Werefox and drew another card. So... This is really one of the stars of the show with the end because essentially I'm turning six cards into draws. And in one of the games where I had Huntsman's Redemption, Garrick's Uprising also in play, I was able to sacrifice Conceited Witch with the second chapter of this saga and then fetched Hamlet Glutton. I had like action all the time and at some point welcome to sweet tooth actually put four counters on a one one on the human overall i love the deck what ended up ha really happening was i was so tired this was six rounds we were expecting 12 maybe 16 players and we ended up having 42 players total 42 players total Here's my round one opponent. Zeb, hey Zeb. Um, he was playing three colors. Uh, I remember the uh, the blue flying creature that had an adventure that hit you for one. I drew into Garrick's Uprising and I was drawing, so I was able to win that round against Zeb. And then versus Akiva, it was a very close game. It was really fun. He stumbled uh, on stuff, but our first game was extremely good. But yeah, I ended up winning this round as well. Round three versus Mitara, uh, he flooded. And I had Garrix and I was drawing more cards. Round four versus Francisco, we tied. Uh, I just survived versus the champ. Which is a great honor. He had a black white sort of enchantment stack. It was based on Dawn of Hope, which he was not able to uh, to take advantage of because I had the uh, the vanguard that took care of the Dawn of Hope in both of the games. So he won the first game, and I won the second one. And both times I had. Uh, removed the Dawn of Hope with the Vanguard, so he wasn't able to capitalize on it. So on the first game, the star of his deck was the Porridge artifact. He was able to tap uh, my creature so I couldn't attack. And he basically was able to also return Hammy to my hand uh, and prevent me from gaining life with it. He was able to attack for a lethal. I missed like one damage <laughs> on the first game, which was crazy. Uh, he gained a lot of life in the first game, which I was able. Uh, I was not able to monitor because I had my big dudes ready, but he was also ready for uh, for it with the uh, that fairy that had the adventure effect of returning a spell to your hand. And then uh, you cast it and you have to discard a card. So he essentially was able to discard uh, or return uh, Hammy to my hand and then discard it the next turn. Uh, it didn't work on the second game because the second game I had Fell Horseman in my hand. So uh, when he returned Hammy to my hand and then... 
casted it the next turn, discarding Hammy. I had Fell Horseman to return Hammy to my hand uh, and cast it again. And he didn't have a second copy. Uh, I was able to look at his, uh, his deck uh, with the end. He had a pretty cool combo with the Werefox and then casted Not So Dead after all to get a Wicked Roll token. So sack to gain two, uh, release my creature, but then it came back and it turned to again exile one of my creatures. That's something I didn't think about. I should feature that as a, <laughs> as a very cool combo. It was a very cool combo. Uh, then next round was where my deck trouble started. Next round versus, uh, Vayu. Me at six life, him having princess. I'm basically dead with that, right? But also in play were two food tokens, which meant that looking at board state, all I should have done during my turn, and I had seven mana. All I should have done during my turn was basically cast uh, Ferocious Rare Fox for four. With Garrick's Uprising, I draw a card. Draw the card if it was a land played. So that I will have, I still have four mana so that I can get life from the food tokens. No. What did I do? I ended up doing the cool combo where instead of casting Ferocious Werefox, I casted the 3-1 Trampler. So I had 7 mana. Gave it a roll, uh, the monster roll token, so it becomes a 4-2. But now it's encha an enchanted uh, enchantment came into the battlefield and it triggered Vanguard from my graveyard. So I paid 2 to take the vanguard from my graveyard to my hand. So I'm down three mana, casted it again. So I have one mana left and that put me dead on board. See, in the previous turns, I was missing triggers off of the vanguard. So in my mind, I was like, you know what? Let's do the combo. I'm not going to miss this trigger this time. I'm going to be able to do this. Not even thinking about me being dead on board. And believe me, I saw it. But when I did the play, I was like, yes, I was able to do the cool combo. But no, I was dead on board. <laughs> Oh, well. Round five. Fatigue hit me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, lost that, that game. And then I proceed. my deck proceeded to uh, do the uh, thing where it didn't give me green mana. I was stuck with green cards in hand and it didn't give me green mana. This is when I started to think about shifting the, uh, the deck to uh, where it uh, ended up without the uh, witch doctor uh, red card anyway last round was versus Sean very very cool guy and his deck was was so cool as well three colors uh, but the star card of his deck was mother goose so I lost the first game against him and on the second game, I modified the deck from this with Witch Talker's Frenzy into this one without Witch Talker Frenzy. Took out Witch Talker Frenzy for Leaping Ambush because he had Mother Goose. Uh, and also took out Braid the Wilds because I didn't need to fetch the mountain anymore uh, for a Territorial Witch Talker so I can have early game. But yeah, uh, again, my opening hand was Witch's Vanity, Red Tooth Vanguard, 
Huntsman's Redemption, the end. Four cards and three lands, which were swamps. I kept it. I kept it. I did not draw green source. I drew Edgewall in on turn five or six, something like that, and was not able to recover. He curved out. He played a two drop. On my turn three, I was able to remove it with Witch's Vanity. Turn goes back to him. He played another creature. Goes back to me. Nada. Goes back to him. He was able to get uh, to play another creature. So I think his sequencing was turn one, he had the food token from the wolf. Turn two, he had the fawn. Turn three, he had the lore dude the two green and a one three four that had three abilities that you can choose one or more of and he decided to return the uh adventured wolf to his hand so he was able to again get another food token basically he was able to just hit me with the uh the lore uh that sage dude and then the next turn he proceeded to uh cast the wolf and then at some point he was able to put down that six five blue dude uh that had the adventure side of uh returning a three mana cast creature to your hand and I had a tapped edge wall in, in play. So he got to his turn six. And I had edge wall in on tap. Mm, returned back to me. It was just useless. I was like down to eight at that point. <laughs> six, five in play. Even with the end, I can remove the, uh, the six, five. He had a three, four a 3-3 three, three, and another uh, creature in play. So four creatures in play. That was a game over. I had a lot of fun in the event. Really, really good to see everyone. And would definitely, definitely go to, uh, to more of this. I really hope that next time I'm more prepared. Because I was not expecting six rounds. It was good to, to have six rounds. But I was burned out. After round four, I really was. Thanks a lot to B2G for holding the event that ended up with 42 players, six rounds of awesome magic. And thank you to the players for putting up with all my misplays and miss triggers, especially to Akiva, who I missed the draw then lore counter. Uh, I did draw, lore counter, draw. Because I was really watching out for the lore counters. And I ended up drawing twice. Congrats to Fives for winning the whole event. Woo! Alright. That's it.